Uh, yeah, I, I would say that's an important thing to reflect on. Uh, as a technocrat, you bring an expertise in a particular body of knowledge, a particular domain. And that expertise can be uh, valued if that's the problem that your community is dealing with at that particular moment in time. But a lot of problems don't exist in the context of expertise. They exist in our values. They exist in our thinking. They exist in our relationships. So politicians need to be able to connect at those levels, not simply explain their interpretation of the problem and what needs to be done for it to be brought to resolution, but to manage the process of the interpretation of the challenge. So it's engaging people at a level that allows for learning, a deep learning in the community, but also for the politician. By, for, by virtue of that process of engagement, you make discoveries around what people think might be more important than addressing the problem at uh, that particular way or the way that you have interpreted it, it to be. So you've got to be more than a technocrat, but you have to an, have an understanding and appreciation for what real leadership is. And you've got to be more than the tribal leader. A tribal leader simply advocates on behalf of their group at the expense of the larger system of what needs to be done. So you have to think systemically on how this problem impacts other problems in the larger system because uh, you know, when the butterfly flaps its wings in uh, Rio de Janeiro, there's a thunderstorm in Singapore. It's all systemic and to understand and appreciate the systemic nature of these challenges requires more than that tribal impulse but a broad global mindset as well. And I think Singaporeans play it a little bit too safe here and uh, for good reasons, so we can understand why that safety and that security and that caution is there. It's a small country and uh, you cannot be disruptive here. But there needs to be a tolerance for uncertainty, for amb ambiguity for even occasional disruption, uh, a degree of chaos if you want. Because if you want more creativity, you're going to have to experiment. If you want more experimentation, you have to have a tolerance for failure. If you want more failure, there's that embracing of failure, not in a punitive way, but like what does that teach us about ourselves or about the particular problem that we're facing? What do we learn? In other words, the breakdown reveals what you don't know that allows for some kind of breakthrough to occur. But if you're playing it safe and you're working or leading in the confines of your boundaries and there's too many kind of rules and regulations, formal or informal, people aren't going to go to the frontier. They're not going to step across. They're not going to experiment. They're not going to try something differently. So if you want innovation, you're going to have to be willing to challenge the prevailing order. You're going to have to be pushing up against the boundaries and you don't always get the result that you want because it generates a bit of a mess that you can always clean up afterwards. But this willingness to embrace the mess in order to learn is critical in the domain that we'll call innovation and creativity. And, uh, And so you're orchestrating a learning process. And if you cannot get a community learning fast enough, the danger is that you're not going to be addressing the critical problems that you're facing. And if those problems persist, it can lead to the demise of that institution or even that society. It can lead to collapse. Uh, Jared Diamond has written a great book about that, Collapse, Why Societies Choose to Succeed or Fail, because they could not learn fast enough. They saw a problem, they didn't respond in the right way or they ignored that problem. They persisted in doing what they were always doing and by virtue of that persistence uh, it led to an apathy and an arrogance that culminated in their demise. We see that in companies, uh, whether it's on Wall Street in the United States and we also see it in communities and societies. What's critical here is to orchestrate, stimulate a process of learning, of discovery. And in that process of learning and discovery, 
It's helping people make sense of what's going on, but it's also conducting the experiments to figure out how do we best respond to these challenges. So developing a capacity, a tolerance for that is critical leadership work in institutions and societies. Or else, uh, if the dominant authority figures are always stepping in as the boundary keepers to tell people, don't worry, I'll handle it, everything's okay, get on with your life, and not allowing people to kind of feel the heat of these problems, uh, that would be an indication to me that it's uh, weak leadership. Real leadership is not simply telling people that you know, I know what the problem is and I know the answer, now depend on me and, and I'll figure it all out. Uh, that's counterfeit leadership. You've got to put the burden of responsibility on a community and then encourage them in, in that work as well. That's a heavy burden, but uh, that's critical in this day and age.